when looking at the particle theory and the idea that everything around us is made up of different size particles that could attract each other, that could some of them are pushing each other away, um, we can apply it to a whole bunch of things, including a simple thing of how sugar dissolves inside your coffee. Or you shouldn't be drinking coffee, though. But how sugar dissolves. So if you've ever tried this, I mean, you can do it as a simple experiment. You put uh, sugar into water, and it looks like the sugar disappears. But if you actually weigh the entire thing, you'll realize that the sugar is still there. You just can't see it. So how can we explain that in terms of particles? We understand the way that the liquid particles are moving around each other. Okay, the water, the water particles are moving around each other. But the sugar particles, why do they actually disappear? And if you pause and study this diagram for a second, it should start to make some sense to you. When you put in the larger sugar uh, particles, you're actually putting in big chunks of sugar that contain hundreds if not thousands or millions of individual sugar particles. And when you, they actually dissolve, well, the energy from the liquid particles are actually moving around, being transferred, and are breaking these apart, breaking the sugar chunks down into smaller particles. And once the sugar is in individual particles, uh, they're too small for us to actually see, and therefore it looks like the entire thing disappears. So uh, quite interesting. Another way to explain, another way to use particles to explain something that happens in everyday life is conduction. This gets pretty detailed, but in general, if you're looking at the transfer of heat through something like a hot spoon or another metal object, how is it that something that heat actually gets transferred if we're talking about energy and particles? So uh, you got to be careful not to touch those really hot things, and that's how some kids can get burned when they reach up and try to grab a a frying pan handle that is not well insulated with some kind of plastic. So if you look at this diagram, um, obviously spoon is solid. Spoon is solid and the particles are packed pretty closely. This is not the best diagram here, but the, uh, the particles are packed pretty closely and when one side gets heated, so say we're adding heat to this side over here, these particles start vibrating. Okay. Now, it's not going to melt yet. Luckily, spoons don't melt that easily. You have to get things, get spoons very, very hot before you start melting the actual metal. But the energy from the vibrations can be transferred to the particles that are adjacent. Adjacent means next to. So the particles vibrate, energy gets transferred. It's like a, it's like a party. They're all bump, moving around, jumping around. So they bump these guys, they bump these guys, they bump these guys. And that energy gets transferred. Up here, maybe these particles are not vibrating so much, but if the adjacent particles are vibrating and transferring that energy, you can think about it as transferring that energy. And if energy produces heat, so if I heat this side here, the spoon obviously gets hot. And I don't even have to heat this side directly, but the energy is getting transferred up over here. And then that's one way to explain uh, conduction of heat through metals by understanding how particles have energy and they pass the energy on. So eventually this end of the spoon handle becomes very hot as well too. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.